Liz and I are very proud that we wrote the instructor's manual <laughs> this time. So it, it's actually tried and true things that we've done with the book. And when we were working on the book, we were never thinking about, oh, this would be a good activity to do in the classroom or this would be a good activity to do online. We never made that separation. So we feel that all the activities we're suggesting and the guidance we're providing should work regardless of the delivery method. We weren't thinking along certain lines, you know, especially too, because, you know, we both taught online, we both taught in the classroom. So I think actually the instructor's manual has a lot of things that if someone's like, I can't figure out what to do on top of just figuring out how to make my students be engaged, it's like, just go there. It is completely designed for a situation like this. And of course, we didn't know a situation like this existed at the time that we were writing the instructor's manual. But now when I think about the situation we're in and I look at the instructor's manual, I realize it's full of amazing ideas that will work in so many different types of teaching situations. I also think that the, the assignments are really detailed that we're both fans of giving detailed assignments, not like extraneous detail, like 10 page tomes to students that they can't figure out, but not like two paragraphs sometimes that people can give and the student's not sure what to do. And by breaking it down into steps and scaffolding throughout, I really feel that, um, you know, an instructor does not have to reinvent things and have to think through so many things because there, there's a lot to deal with as everyone's aware of just trying to teach through these times and in these times. I think one thing that students often stumble over is not really knowing what are options outside of a traditional academic paper. And I think one of the strengths of the Bedford Book of Genres is that it provides students with so many different models of different types of compositions. And they can see student examples, they can see professional examples, they can see examples that live on the web, examples that live in print form or, or audio form or some other form. And so I think that a student who is thinking, um, I want to do something other than a traditional essay or research paper, but I don't know what to do. They could just randomly open the book to a page and get an idea for a different genre that they might compose in. I also think that the new edition really tries to look at what's topical for students right now. So whether it's the student loan debt crisis, which so many of our students can relate to, or some of the social justice issues. I also think, you know, we've seen increases in anxiety and depression with our students and we have extended coverage with a student doing research on teenage anxiety. So I think we were trying to really understand what would be appealing because I think when um, I think we all need to escape these times too and one can only stream so many cool television shows that I think for students Actually, going to class is a good thing to keep your mind off of things. I know for me, like when I'm in class, I'm not, you know, scrolling the news or anything like that. And I think for students, too, it's a way like I can put my mind elsewhere. So by having readings and assignments they can relate to, I think is really important. Mm -hmm.